Good afternoon everyone. We're going to uh, look at this subject as God the Father and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to consider certain aspects. First of all we're going to look at uh, the Bible, we're going to look at the word God, look at the Father and then consider how that applies to you and me. Now the Bible well, the Bible is God's word to us and we need to know God's word, we need to understand God's word and then we need to act upon God's word. That's what it's telling us clearly as we look at it. And we can see when we're considering these subjects that it is a very personal message, it's for you and me. And we can apply these things in our lives today to give us a real hope for the future. So, what we need to do is look at this. God communicates us to us accurately, simply, and clearly. And we've seen this is through our Bible. And there we see too that it is written with purpose and promises. And the wonderful thing about the Bible, it's able to change our lives and it can be to us a real help and it can give us hope now and for the future and especially in this hopeless world that we live in and the other wonderful thing is it gives us all the answers that we need today for the questions that we're putting before us and the things that we're looking at now God in the Bible he tells us he's a true God and is a God of purpose and promises. And when we look at the word God, it simply means object of worship. But what we're looking at is the true God, a living God, a God who has a purpose and a plan. And so when we look at these, it is important. So I'd like you to turn with me and open our Bibles together. Isaiah chapter 44 to start with. And he's talking here to the people of Israel. And uh, we're going to look at them in a little bit more detail in a moment or two. Because we're going to see this relationship of God and Father. And in verse 8 it says there, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it, ye are even my witnesses. There is, is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. And so to the very fact that God exists, the people of Israel were a witness to him. And he's saying there is no other God besides him. And uh, if you go over to chapter 45, it tells us there about the purpose that he has. Verse 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it not in vain, or to be waste. He formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord, and there is none else. So very clear and precise is telling us that God of the Bible is the God who created heaven and earth. He created it for a purpose, to be inhabited by people. And that can include you and I. And then he makes it very clear again, doesn't he? I am the Lord and there is none else and the other wonderful thing about this message here if we look to verse 22 it applies to you and me it says look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else so it's a clear message he's saying look I'm the creator I've created the earth for a purpose to be inhabited by men and women there is no other God beside me so look unto me and you can be saved wonderful clear message so what about father well what is a father well we know clearly one who exercises paternal duties to perform love and care over other persons one who provides and protects and also one who gives reassurance and hope in a person's life and there's that wonderful bond isn't there sometimes between 
father and his children where he can show that love for them that no one else can show and they feel don't they protected and feel that they are being provided for by their parents so that's very simply a father isn't it but I want us today to look at God the father so what we're going to consider that he was the father of the Jewish nation and uh, I'd like you to turn to Exodus chapter 4 to start with please just to show us that this is his relationship with the people of Israel Exodus chapter 4 And verse 22 he says and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh this is when the people of Israel were in Egypt and they were slaves and Moses had come to Egypt to get the people of Israel out of Egypt and so he talks to Pharaoh and says thus saith the Lord Israel is my son even my firstborn so what it's showing that the people of Israel had this relationship with God where he was calling them his son and he, they were his children and if you just look at Jeremiah 31 it, it, it just shows us that again just to look at this I, Jeremiah 31 and verse 9 And near the end of the verse it says for I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn and so he's saying clearly that he is a father to the people of Israel and many and many a time in the Bible Israel is seen as the children of Israel the children of God and that same thing we were saying about a father who shows love and care for his children well God does the same so we just turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and look at this relationship Israel had with God we see how important it is that we look at these things verse 6 of Deuteronomy 7 it says for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth so they were special above any other people and it says clearly doesn't it they are a holy people and the word holy means separate you are separate to me you are special to me now why were they special to God well verse 7 tells us clearly the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people for you were the fewest of all people but and this is the reason why he has this relationship with them because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers and then he says hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the hand of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt so this was the time again of Pharaoh when Israel were in Egypt but the reason that God had this father children relationship with them is simply because he loved them and because of the promises he had made to their fathers and God had said to Abram their forefather in you Abram will all families of the earth be blessed and in you Abram will I make a great nation so God shows his love and his care for this people who are his children in this way because he loved them and because he'd made promises to them and he also shows us in the Bible that he looks after and provides 
and protects his children. Turn to Joshua chapter 1. And what we're doing is looking snippets from the Bible and looking to show how important that we read the whole of the Bible. And in Joshua, this was the time when the children of Israel were going in to the promised land that God had promised to them. They'd been on a wilderness journey and Joshua was the leader now after Moses. And he says to them in verse 5 of chapter 1 of Joshua, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So you see, God's saying, I'm going to look after you, I'm going to provide for you, and I'm going to protect you. And he's saying clearly, I'm going to be with you. I'll not fail you. I'll not let you down. And this is the God of the Bible that we're talking about. This is the relationship of a father and his children. He says, I'll never let you down. I'll never forsake you. And he says there, doesn't he? Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance the land which I swear unto the fathers to give them. And so God was true to his word. He promised them a land that they would possess. And this is the point where they were going to go into this land by this leader Joshua. But God said, I will not leave you or forsake you. I will look after you. I will protect you and I will provide for you. And he gives reassurance and hope. You go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 39 this time. And we were talking about this this morning, about things being in the heart where it really matters to God. Verse 39, Now therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments which I command thee this day that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. And that's the reassurance, isn't it? I will be with you forever. He says, I will prolong your days on the earth. And you are my children. And I will look after you. And I give you this great hope of the future. That one day you will live forever. So when we look at God the Father. He completes his duties fully. God the Father though requires something from his children. Well, chapter 6 of Deuteronomy and this is what he required of them. He says here O Israel verse 4 The Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So like any father, children, there requires respect, there requires obedience. And what they had to learn, that God first loved them in that he provided for them a land to live in and the Bible terms it a land flowing with milk and honey. But he required something of them. Yes, he first loved them, but he required them to love him and to do as he asks of them. And there's this father-children relationship. Do as you're told, I look after you and care for you. But he says, these things I command you it's not of 
if you want to, or please yourself, which I command you, will be in your heart. And don't ever, ever forget, I'll always be with you. Look at chapter 10 of Deuteronomy and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And he questioned, for thy good? Well, of course it was for their good. But the wonderful thing here. God as the Father was setting an example. He would never, ever let his children down. And he asks of them to be obedient. And if they are obedient, then he will show his love and care for them. And when we look at this, we see a pattern appearing and developing in both events and behaviour. You see, God had chosen them because he loved them, and he says of them as they were his son, his children. And that in turn, the children were to be obedient. And we see this pattern event coming out, don't we? It's all about obedience and behaviour. And we know too that God is the Father of Jesus Christ. And God's purpose is secured in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll just have a look at a few verses to show this. Because he too was born for a purpose, the Son of God. And he was special. He was born of a woman the Holy Spirit, the power of God came upon Mary and she conceived and she was to bear a son. Let's just have a look at that. Luke chapter 1 verse 32 the angel had appeared to Mary and he says to her, he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there be no end. So we see the pattern with Israel as a type of what was to come. The father-son-children relationship. And now we see the Son of God who is going to be king over God's kingdom and of his kingdom it says there will be no end yes the kingdom of Israel it came and then it went but the kingdom of God that Jesus his son is going to set up on this earth is going to well it says it clearly doesn't it of him shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom no end very precise isn't it so he was born for this purpose and then again we're told in John chapter 3 and this verse is used many times John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but everlasting life. And what we're seeing now in this pattern of events and behaviour that this relationship with the Father and his Son is so very important and he's saying clearly that God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice for you and I 
But notice it's conditional though. It's not for everybody because it says clearly, doesn't it? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's conditional, this relationship. Whosoever believeth in him will not perish. So that same relationship that God had with the children of Israel the same relationship that he has with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we too can have that same relationship. And we notice as well that the Lord Jesus, who died for us, rose again. And in Luke chapter 24, it tells us there clearly, at verse 6, when they were looking for him, they said, he is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And that's the purpose of God, isn't it? That his Son was born to be king. His Son was born to die for us. And he rose again on the third day. And we know now that he is at the right hand of God, waiting that day that God has appointed to return to this earth to set up those promises he made so long ago. So, God has united himself to his son in the closest bond of love and now only now to share in his divine nature and the wonderful thing is Jesus did everything to fulfill his father's will please turn to John chapter 4 verse 34 Here's Jesus speaking and he's saying Jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He's saying it's my meat it's my duty to fulfill the work of my father who has sent me to do these things. And in chapter 5 verse 19 it says there Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For whatsoever things he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. And so we see a God, who is a living God, who is caring and loving and merciful and kind and we see that reflected in his son the Lord Jesus Christ for he says he can do nothing of himself but what he sees a father do he does himself and that's a true relationship a father and son isn't it if the father is doing that which is right the son is following in his footsteps and we hear it say, don't we, many times, he isn't he just like his father? And that was the Lord Jesus with his relationship with God, his father. He did everything right in the eyes of God. And when people saw Jesus, in a way, they saw God because he did exactly the things that God wanted him to do. And Jesus is going to secure the promises that were made to the children of Israel by God when he returns to the earth to set up God's kingdom. Now, Jesus gave this assurance to his disciples. Please turn to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. And we see how it fits in and ties in lovely all together what was said to the children of Israel 
because the disciples asked Jesus in verse 6 when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel you see he knew that that relationship that God had with Israel was right and true the only thing that went wrong the people of Israel let him down they failed him but the Lord Jesus Christ was perfect in every way and so he is the one that's going to come back to re-establish that kingdom but this time when he comes it's going to stand forever that's a wonderful thing and the assurance he gives them is one we know very well verse 11 isn't it which ye also said ye men of Galilee why stand gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven and that was the assurance to those disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ that they witnessed and saw him go up into heaven and he promised them that he's going to come back in the like manner and he's going to set up God's kingdom and that's the assurance that you and I have that Jesus Christ is coming back so what about you and me very briefly we've considered the relationship of God the Father with his children and with the Lord Jesus Christ and you and I can have that relationship well the wonderful thing is that we can have that same relationship through Jesus Christ God's son and again that same principle he shows his love and care for us and it was there wasn't it in John 3:16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and then this is the part isn't it that whosoever believeth in him will not perish so we've got to believe in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ and as we said at the beginning we've got to know it from the Bible God's word we've got to understand what it's telling us and then we've got to act upon its message of hope we've got to do something about it we've got to have that relationship and in the Bible it terms it as being born again a new start, a new beginning to have a relationship with God and his son and we become like adopted children where God will care for us and look after us and if we obey him he gives us this hope for the future but it's got to be that we believe no other way he looks after and provides for us John chapter 10 verse 28 and he was talking of his followers like sheep he says verse 27 my sheep hear my voice I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand now isn't that lovely if we have that relationship with God and his son the Lord Jesus Christ we're like following the shepherd of the sheep and if we follow him in the way that he asks and he holds us he'll never ever let us go he'll look after for us he'll provide for us and isn't that lovely and we know when we see a mother with a newborn babe there it is and there's nobody going to take that child from her is there? it's there and that child feels protected and loved even at an early age and that's the same kind of relationship we can have with God and the Lord Jesus Christ 
Turn to Romans chapter 8, please. Verse 31. And this is what we need to say, you see. We live in a world that is a hopeless world, isn't it? Very selfish. And we can see the troubles that are in the world today. And really, we need God in our lives. Because one day, very soon, he's going to take control and send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we need to be saying. In verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's true, isn't it? If God is on our side, nobody can be against us. Nobody. If God and his ways are in our heart, nobody, not anybody, can take that from us. And if we really believe from the heart that Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to set up a kingdom, then nobody can take that from us. And it requires faith. Trust in God's word, doesn't it? And that's lovely. If God is for us, nobody can be against us. And he gives us, like with this father-son relationship, reassurance and hope. Luke chapter 12. Verse 32. Again, relating to them as like sheep following the shepherd. And he says, God saying, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, isn't that lovely? You see, God wants us to be in the kingdom. He really wants you and I to be in the kingdom and it's his good pleasure to give it to us but we have to respond to this word it just doesn't come to us we've got to respond in a positive way as children of our heavenly father we've got to be obedient in Matthew chapter 28 it tells us there verse 20 the last verse of the gospel of Matthew he says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world so we've got to keep his commandments. But he's, he's with us to help us and to guide us. If we fall, he'll pick us up. That's the beauty, isn't it? Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end. How wonderful that is. And show the same love and care that has been shown to us. So we've got to do the same. So with fellow believers we've got to treat them like brothers and sisters we've got to care and love them as he has first loved us and in the first epistle of John chapter 4 that's what it says very clearly to us verse 11 beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another And if we go back to the Gospel of John and chapter 15, the Lord Jesus Christ also says the same thing. Verse 10 If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you 
Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. He says, you are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. And so what's been shown to us, we have to do the same. And this we see so beautifully. And so we have a responsibility to do our Heavenly Father's will. And in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, it says these words. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we have to do the will of God, not just talk about it, not just read it, we've got to understand it and apply it in our lives that we might glorify your Heavenly Father. But you see, He's only our Heavenly Father if we have that relationship with Him of obeying His voice. He is not our Heavenly Father if we do not obey His commands. So we have responsibility to walk in the Father's way. And in Ephesians chapter 5, it tells us that. You don't need to turn it up, I'll read it to you. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sake. So we must show this responsibility. We must truly believe God the Father. And I think these words are so, so important to each one of us today. In verse 38 of Romans 8, it says, For I am persuaded, and I hope you are persuaded by God's word, that it is true, that it is sure, that you and I can have this father-children relationship with him and that we're able to say these words together. He says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Apostle Paul here, that was the relationship he had. He said there was nothing in life that could separate him from that which has been done for him. And he was persuaded fully to follow in the ways of his Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we can look to the future with hope, and you don't need to turn that, but that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, if we are willing, and that's the point, if we are willing, we can have God as our Father, but we must believe in him and his Son, Jesus Christ. And then we can all truly say these words. And Ian read them for us at the beginning. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, please. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father. And that's what it starts off with, isn't it? And if we have that relationship with him, we can truly pray like this, can't we? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And that's what we pray for, isn't it? Thy kingdom come. And he says, doesn't he? Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory both now and forever. Amen. That prayer is very important. But we can only say it if God is truly our Heavenly Father. So friends, we say God the Father will send Jesus soon. Prepare now for your future. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. Because it might be too late tomorrow. And so we say, please, prepare for your future now before it is too late. Because remember and never ever forget that God is saying through his Son that thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, both now and forevermore.